Okay, so so we looked at um, you know transformation keys to for personal transformation, and one other thing is embracing the truth of uh, the power of the finished work of the Lord Jesus on the cross. Um, the second one is uh, our identity, right? Holding on, embracing uh, identity, and uh, and living according to our new identity. Okay. The third one, uh, which is again something that we have seen before earlier, uh, is uh, renewing our mind, okay, renewing, changing, renovating, you know, uh, whatever word we want to use there, uh, renewing our mind, okay, so that's the uh, third one. Now, the thing is, this uh, responsibility lies with us, okay, the renewing of our mind, like the Lord will not do it for us, um, He gives us the resources because uh, we are called to renew our mind with his thoughts his words um you know uh, uh, so his ways so so the, the the renewal of our mind so the renovation of our mind the changing of our mind to the mind of christ the changing of our mind to the truth of god's word so our mind is like a, uh you know it's uh it's a very uh, it's, it's an amazing uh creation um you know so much of memory it can hold and uh, you know really uh, uh, enables us to think uh, creatively etc but, but mind is also um you know if we don't use it the way it's supposed to be it, it can be our worst enemy right if in our minds reside our thoughts imaginations um and which uh, which drive our behavior okay our thoughts really drive our behavior our thoughts uh, our thoughts um lead our behavior right thoughts so which means that um uh, uh, everything you know the way we speak the way we do things uh, um is dependent on the kind of thoughts that we that we have you know everything that we saw earlier attitude you know temperament um it it, it starts in the mind in the form of thoughts right and it's it kind of resides in the mind, especially if it's some hurt that we are harboring, some resentment that we have, or some thought of revenge, uh, getting back. You know, this person said this. Uh, I need to put that person in place, you know, set them, set them right. You know, all that it's it's in the realm of our mind. It's it's in the realm of our soul. So um, we need to watch out. And we need to watch out and we need to intentionally you know, uh, change the way we perceive things, change the way we think about certain things. Uh, especially if, let, let's say, if we are a person, you know, who is, uh, who's always prone to, like, let's say, putting people in their place. Okay. When I say putting people in their place, like, let's say they say something, we immediately react to that and they say something, you know, uh, about them. And uh, we want to put them in their place. Uh, they said something negative about me. They tried to insult me in public, so I will, you know, insult them again in public, so that they know who's the boss. They know that they can't get away with these kind of things. You know, if if we are you know, that kind of a, if we have that kind of a mindset, thinking, way of thinking, um, then that needs to change, right? We know that it's unchristlike. We know that it needs to change. So how will it change? It will change when we, when we have, uh, you know, when our, in our thoughts, uh, when we have these prompts, okay, come on now, just go for it, right? Now put them in their place. Then we, we change our minds. We change our decision. Okay, that's renewing the mind in, in a very simple manner. We change our decision uh, according to the truth of God's word, right? According to the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? So we change. We're saying, okay, no, I'm a, I'm a new man in Christ. I'm a new woman in Christ. Um, you know, the whatever is fueling, you know, that has been that's dead. So I have, I have authority over my actions. I'm not a slave of the sin. I'm a slave of righteousness. You know, righteousness flows out of me. Uh, righteousness is what I live in. Uh, I've been clothed with the righteousness of Christ, you know, so you change your mind about getting back or about revenge, uh, about resentment, 
we change our mind and you see that uh, initially it's, it's a it's it's difficult right because this this kind of thinking and behavior could be so entrenched in our minds this is how we behaved maybe say 20 years 30 years of our lives right this is how we behave this is how we learned this is how we behave this is how we survive right uh, maybe it was a very hostile environment like a workplace or you know you you had to be you know on the edge all the time and you had to show them who was the boss and and this is how we survived and these are skills that we picked up and said okay uh, you know for example um, let's say uh, you know whenever you feel threatened you come back with anger and rage and come back with anger and rage extreme anger and throw things around throw vessels break plates and everybody quietens down everybody's like Whoosh. oh dad's in a bad mood let's let's not do anything and we learned that and and, and we do the same thing okay uh, anger and intimidation right and that's been so part maybe of our lives for years uh, for it to change it's difficult right? you need we need to change our minds you know we have all that urge to you know uh, uh, react in anger intimidate the other person say you know, shout out um, in rage but you change your mind you change your mind so which means our mind is so renewed to our identity our mind is so renewed to the work of the holy spirit in our lives right so renewed to that it's so renovated that whenever these even these thoughts come of revenge thoughts come of shouting uh, shouting and intimidating that person that is replaced by the truth of god's word okay, so it becomes a righteous response instead of a unrighteous reaction okay unrighteous instead of i so it's it's a totally different thing okay. so it becomes a righteous response now um well that's a walk of consecration right? that's a walk of sanctification now that needs to happen day in and day out right it is possible and our mind becomes stronger and stronger our will becomes strengthened and strengthened uh, to walk in righteousness and rejects uh, and completely rejects these thoughts or prompts of unrighteousness okay so um, romans 12 and verse 2 i think we've um, verses 1 and 2 you've read it many times um let me just uh, read it again romans 12 um, so verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world or you know fit into this world pattern of values but be transformed radical change word used there is metamorpho which means you know one the change is uh, unrecognizable kind of a change so be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God so the renewing of our mind again you know it's tied to knowing and proving the uh, the perfect will of God um, so renewing of our mind so when when our with, with our renew minds our behavior changes okay so that's results in personal transformation which which helps us in in our marriage uh, scenario fourth one is walking in the spirit so walking as led by the holy spirit walking uh, walking meaning you know living our life as led by the holy spirit living our life as guided by the holy spirit as prompted by the holy spirit so so we become sensitive to what pleases him we become sensitive to um, you know uh, 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 what grieves him what what quenches his work we become sensitive to that and we esteem our relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. So um, we esteem him to that extent that we want to obey, right? We want to please God rather than pleasing our own selves, rather than, you know, uh, winning in that situation, right? Winning that argument, uh, putting people in place, you know, rather than that, we want to give, give way. To be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, 
so we see that uh, Ephesians 5 uh, verse, verse 18 to 21 Paul says do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the Holy Spirit um, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs uh, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another in the fear of God right so um so we see this so so instead of being drunk with wine so uh, referring to wine alcohol influences right it influences how does alcohol influence us um you know alcohol makes us lose inhibitions alcohol influences our thoughts our thinking that uh, and completely takes over as we consume more and more and uh, and in, in, and really drives the person to do some crazy things which uh, he or she would not do if they were sober, right? It, it actually influences them in such a way or overpowers them in such a way that uh, they do they do stuff which they normally would not do. So looking at how we can be influenced, be filled with the Holy Spirit, be influenced by the Holy Spirit in order to be led to do some radical things and these radical things would be you know loving unconditionally these radical things would be forgiving as christ would forgive these radical things would be you know in those lines where the holy spirit leads us to do some things and us being completely influenced right, under the influence of the holy spirit walking in the spirit um and and, and we see you know in galatians um, 5 where um, paul says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill galatians 5 16 walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh you know all these things that we see you know that we are we have to overcome is um in the realm of the uh, in the realm of the soul as influenced by the flesh um, fleshly appetites and so on so here we see this instruction walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill you shall not it's a very you know definitive statement you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh well the reality is um, uh, the reality is the presence of the lust of the flesh you know that also we know uh, does not uh, negate and say okay there will not be you know, as you are led by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit, you will not feel any kind of uh, lust of the flesh. You know, that's not what it says. It says here that you will not fulfill. Like, you will live in dominion. Sin will not live in dominion, like we saw in Romans 6.14. Right? Sin shall not be in dominion. So, um, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, you will bring to an end the deeds of the body crucify the flesh so the things of the flesh right um, if you see uh, the, that list which is there uh, Ephesians 5 and uh, uh, right after verse 16 right um, verse 19 onwards works of the flesh are evident adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness um, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So um, if you look at this, these are really things that attack and destroy a marriage, okay. uh, which really um, are toxic to any relationship but definitely to a marriage right very true um if you look at it you know the first three itself adultery extramarital fornication sex before marriage um talks about uncleanness and lewdness and unclean thoughts unclean desires and dabbling in unclean things lewdness being brazenly um uh uh was the word brazenly wicked or brazenly uh, sinful in plain sight and especially sexual sin lewdness so you see that those are um, those are enemies of marriage and uh, and it and it says that these are 
the works of the flesh to what extent the flesh can actually degrade a human being and he's writing to believers and he's saying you know believers who are filled by the spirit and he's writing to believers you know this is the work of the flesh don't be fooled it can the flesh can drag you to such extent if you are actually led by it if you are a carnal believer right so there'll be no difference the way you live and the way uh, an unbeliever lives so you know there'll be no difference but if you are led by the spirit if you are led by the spirit and the fruit of the spirit is these things right so um so also talks about the fact that something that happened uh, finished work that those who are christ have crucified the flesh with the passions and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not become conceited provoking one another envying one another okay so pride conceit envy again uh, destroy a good marriage right so 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 we're looking at how temperaments how important it is for us to uh, to temperamentally allow the lord to be the lord of our lives really to have him you know be enthroned in our hearts and lives okay uh, which is really the fear of the lord right which is esteeming the lord having a reverential awe of god um, so because whenever we indulge in the flesh we are not honoring the lord okay um well you know we think of grace and we think of mercy and the fact that you know we can come back but then um the flesh completely overwhelms us you know when when you think of these things like contentions and jealousies and outbursts of wrath and and all these things right okay so um so let's uh, let's just move on right so these these four things these four keys are very important for personal transformation right so um so it, it, as believers uh, we need to maintain christ like attitudes spirit fill or spirit control temperament and word go on behavior um so when it comes to ourselves when it comes to relating to our spouse you know we need to maintain that so and, and we use the word maintain because it's an ongoing thing okay it's not only during the time of courtship when oh you don't really know the person and you want to impress the other person and you want to say the right things do the right things uh, you want to show your best self to the person right it's not during those times of getting to know the person during the kind time of courtship but also you know like 3 years 5 years 10 years down the line right so this thing needs to be maintained it's an ongoing thing regarding our attitude regarding our temperament regarding our behavior and this thing needs to be maintained okay so um so when it comes to um uh if i do this like if i take responsibility for this then uh you know it's i fulfill uh i fulfill my responsibility my 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 part of it in uh, understanding my spouse in relating to my spouse uh, and it's going to affect everything you know right from thoughts right from perception uh, what i do and what i for what i do for uh, my spouse and and also in what ways i communicate you know there's uh, if you if you're looking at the notes uh for the married person right it's uh, specifically designed for the married person so um if if you are you know uh, considering someone right then also i guess it it applies it says you know thoughts what do i think about my spouse perception how do i view my spouse you know do i say that he or she is you know the negative side of it the positive side of it what is it uh, action what do i do to and for my spouse what do i say to and about my spouse you know? so and um, areas that i i need to change these are four areas so what change do i bring in you know is there a um is there some change that i must bring in 
right so it this really helps us this exercise really helps us to um, to be specific okay um in in what area what do i do um exchange and uh, and the fact is this that we are not doing out of our own willpower but we on based on what has already happened right part of the cross our identity who i am who we are in christ um and uh, our you know renewing our minds and and walking as led by the spirit okay so this um, this is something that um would really help us in personal change um okay, so any any uh, any doubts any thoughts so far let me just uh, yeah any any thoughts any doubts um but I have a, a doubt. <clears throat> Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, sure. Um, but I had a conversation with uh, one person. Mm. Um, so um, she, she was saying um, she's getting very late to get married. And uh, she looked for a lot of uh, proposals from the believer side. And she's not getting. So she's going ahead with uh, uh, non-believer non-believer in the sense uh, christian uh, but not a believer believer uh, mm. and <laughs> one reason she's saying is i uh, many believers are very judgmental and arrogant and i've been looking mm. for many years now and things like that and uh, um, so and many uh, catholics are getting converted to christianity also uh, mm. Uh, I mean, in the believers, I, I, I hope uh, you understood what I meant. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how do we communicate uh, uh, the truth, Pastor? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a little difficult, you no? Know? Like, once a person knows the truth and still chooses not to obey the truth, um, like because of circumstances. Um, whatever difficulty of circumstances saying okay it's too difficult for me to hold on to the truth so i'm just going to you know so uh, the, the person must be aware you know we just we can just uh, see now we can only influence we can't force so all that we can do is present the truth and say okay, this is what the word of god says i know the reality of your situation but this is what the word of god says so uh, how can we help in any other way okay uh, can we facilitate uh, maybe some you know network try and find out okay get some proposals which you can consider um, uh, and reconsider certain proposals maybe even reconsider certain proposals which have come and and why did you reject you know maybe the person looked at it through uh, I don't know in what way they assessed so maybe you know, can just help them see things you know what do you mean by judgmental you know there's no uh, the, there's no way that uh, you know the, the person who doesn't believe in Christ can also be judgmental. Uh, so, what do you mean by judgmental? And uh, what are those qualities that you are saying? You know that you're rejecting people for uh, that you didn't. You know, find. so it's a personal choice that we can actually help uh, clarify certain things. Maybe they are looking on to you know they're holding on to certain things in their mind which are. Um, uh, which which could be a wrong evaluation of a person you know i'm just assuming so that that could be one one way to help but also to present the truth saying you know this is what the word of god says so when you know if you're going to be marrying and a person who's not a believer there will be consequences in the sense there will be challenges you know? uh, and you need to be fully uh, aware of that uh, you don't go in with your eyes closed you need to be fully aware of that. that there will be tension, that there will be pull, uh, challenge. Um, because now, right now, courtship days, everything will look rosy, <laughs> you know, but uh, true values and things that you value will not be of value to that person. That right now they might be understanding and very broad minded and say, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You live, you know, this is how you want to be. That's fine. We'll go with it. But you know, uh, right from the time how you want to spend your Sundays, 
how you want to you know bring up your children and uh, the kind of values that you want to bring them up in there will be you know contradiction and you need to be aware of that are you ready for that you know and uh, yeah so things like that john i just feel that they need to be you know, yes yeah, yeah yeah thanks mm-hmm. yeah thanks so any other questions that was from a very pastoral angle you know counseling helping someone <laughs> so so anything from a personal side you know uh, saying okay um these are some attitudes that i see um okay so so the thing is uh, you know while you are working on yourself you know while we are working on on, on ourselves it will be great if the other person is also working on his or her self uh, you know uh, with the same intensity with the same passion saying i need to be the best for my future spouse um it's great if the person can do that and that's why we you know we need to prepare and uh, uh, like amos 3 and verse 3 says can two walk together unless they are in agreement so even this preparation is an agreement saying yeah you know i need to prepare myself i i understand the value of preparing myself um for uh, the future and i can't just prepare for the wedding but i need to prepare for the marriage that's ahead and these are two different things um, so it's good right uh, so it's an ongoing thing you know there are certain things that um, you know we we kind of you know prepare ourselves nail down um uh for the marriage that's ahead and there are certain things of course we continue to do you know these these things like we said it's an ongoing thing so that um, we can be our best spouse right um, in the relationship right okay so what do you think do you think it's uh, marriage is a good thing yes pastor definitely <laughs> <laughs> the married person is saying so i think uh, yeah definitely it's a lot of ev- you have the weight of evidence with you john <laughs> yeah it, it also helps us to uh, understand ourselves also better certainly yeah. uh, uh, so one thing as you were mentioning about attitudes as is thinking uh, mm-hmm. there are certain things which we think um, uh, you know i was good in but when we get into a marriage then uh, we realize that yo no a lot of work to do in that area also right and right yeah it helps us yeah. to understand ourselves better true true yeah absolutely so the thing is what will really help us is to you know look at it as uh, something ongoing and something for every believer you know not just for marriage this will you know overflow into marriage but really if you see this renewing of the mind and being led by the spirit and embracing our identity and uh, uh, and what's the first one that we said you know uh, the power of the cross the finished work of the cross these are some basics fundamentals for every believer as a disciple of christ you know, these are some things that i need to walk in so it's not like um, you know uh, something else that i take on right but it's it's actually uh, a normal christian life right that we work with ourselves that we we consecrate ourselves sanctify ourselves and every day we do this so um so you don't have to look at it like oh wow marriage is so difficult no you know when we start working on ourselves it will flow into our marriage as well right and uh, and for those of us who are already married this will really result in a key change uh, i mean in the major change uh, in our in our relationship right yeah spouse will notice that change okay how come you are very patient these days or how come you changed and and uh, yeah so there's a question here how to deal with disagreements in a marriage yeah rosal so we're going to look at uh, the whole aspect of conflict okay uh, so if you can wait till then and i think we we're going to address it right um, uh, resolving conflicts and it will be in depth uh, that is chapter 10 Okay, we are in chapter five right now. Chapter ten is about resolving conflicts. So, uh, so there will be uh, okay. So the first one, the reality is there will be disagreements in marriage. Okay, that's a given. There will be conflicts uh, because we are two different people who are works in progress. There will be, but the good thing is this: uh, we can work through it. Right? If 
one picture that really uh, probably I'll just share this and then we'll move on. One picture that really helped me personally is this that um, that both the husband and the wife are sitting on one side of the table. We're not really sitting opposite each other, confronting one another, you know, uh, working at two different things. We are actually sitting on the same side of the table because we are working towards something together. Okay, so even when it comes to disagreements and working through disagreements, we are actually on the same side of the table. We're not on op opposite uh, ends of the table. We are on the same side of the table, looking at the same objective. So we might have different viewpoints, but so that picture really helped. Hey, you're on my side. You're we are in the same team. You're not in opposing teams. You're on the same team. We're on the same side. You're not my enemy. You know, my friend, companion. So with that in mind, well, we are disagreeing on this. Some disagreements are very sharp, very, you know, uh, uh, let's say uh, it's, 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 it's really a sharp division. But how can we work through? Right? So, so that's really, you know, helped uh, me personally to look at it that way. Yeah, so we look at it in chapter 10, right? OK. Um, OK, if there's nothing else, then we'll move on. Uh, to chapter six now chapter six is a big one <laughs> i must say that chapter six is uh is uh, it's like um it's like something that we need to work on and it's always you can't say i've arrived you know we can never say that so it's a big one and it's it's this whole thing of communication okay communication is is a big one in marriage um because People are different. There are different styles of communication. There are different uh, ways in which we communicate. Um, like how many? How many of you went through that quiz, love language quiz? Um, John has, had posted the link on the stream, so I hope you uh, you know tried it out. Otherwise, you can try. It's a good resource. Um, Gary Chapman's uh, you know. Um, his, his work, his study on uh, love language and so on. So that's that will really give us an insight. So if you've not done it, uh, I would just encourage you to go and look at that website um, and also take up that quiz. Okay? So it will give you some understanding uh, about how you communicate, how you express um, yourself, and how you receive you know, uh, love and how you receive uh, uh, how you give love and receive love. So it's, it'll really help. OK, so communication. So there are different styles. Um, and we see that communication is very, very important. It is uh, is it essential. And uh, it helps um, maintain a strong relationship. It helps to improve the relationship. OK. Um, and as we you know, improve our communication, we see that the relationship grows. So it's like something that helps the relationship grow and right? help the marriage relationship thrive. So it's communication. So if we are not, if we are communicating well, if we understand what are the blocks uh, in communication, um, then it will really be an eye opener, right? We can say, okay, yeah, we say, Fine. You know, this is where my communication uh, needs to change. You know, in under pressure, this is how I communicate. So I better change my way of communication. Right? I might be all sincere in my intent, but uh, you know, with a lot of things going wrong, and if I'm under pressure, then I, you know, maybe there's a different style in which I need to communicate things, right? Uh, and a different way in which I need to express, right? So. Let's look at different levels of communication. Okay, let me just uh, open up. Uh, okay, I'll just share this. Okay, so we have different levels of communication. Generally speaking, um, a communication can be uh, has that come up on the screen? Yeah, OK. So communication can be casual. OK, so this is what we normally, um, well, this is the style of communication that we, uh, all, the level of communication where all, all are, you know, uh, uh, maybe it's an acquaintance, you know, uh, a person who's just an acquaintance who, whom you don't know very well. Uh, this is a casual conversation. It 
it would be you know talking about the weather have you had your breakfast have you had your lunch uh, and how are you nice to see you and you don't normally you know uh, even expect a response you know how how are things with you yeah it's fine and you just move on you know it's a uh, uh, we're just being courteous we're being polite and it's a casual conversation you know we might we might exchange some facts we might exchange some information uh, oh the traffic these days is really you know terrible isn't it and then we talk about it so it's just a very casual thing right then there's another level of uh, or a different uh, level of communication which could be a professional communication maybe this could be uh, at our workplace at a place of study you know where we are uh, because of the need to communicate we're sharing information okay there's a lot of uh, sharing of information facts ideas um, you know viewpoints you know, opinion analysis all that we are sharing okay so we need to maybe arrive at some decisions so there's a lot of communication happening but it's but it's in this realm you know there's a exchange of ideas there's an exchange of thoughts exchange of opinions maybe uh, exchange of uh, conclusions based on these facts so it's again right um, you know and uh, it's professional right then uh, another level would be friendship right? and as friends you see that your communication changes right you could be casual you could be uh, you know there could be sharing of information but it also along with the sharing of information you are sharing your feelings you are sharing your emotions you are sharing your thoughts right what you think deeply what you care about you know all that and it's you know you're sharing it in a in a language you're sharing it in a way you're expressing it in a way which is a lot more casual uh, than in a strictly you know uh, official manner right so your language is different um uh, and so on so it's it's friendship so you're share, you know you're sharing okay this is what you know maybe your dreams are this is what your likes are this is what your dislikes are and which you may not share you know in a professional kind of setting right so um, maybe even your fears okay and in, in a in a friendship kind of a communication there could be also uh, you know there's also scope for correction right you you know you communicate and you say hey that's not right uh, that's terrible why did you do that uh, you know so all that happens in a friendship uh, communication um then there is the communication of intimacy it's uh, where uh, it's a deeper level and uh, this is a communication in a marriage relationship so what is the characteristic of this you know there is trust you're trusting the person there is commitment there is companionship and friendship and you're sharing your deepest emotions and deepest uh, feelings longings and desires maybe even you know our fears which we would not normally share uh, in a friendship uh, conversation also okay so it's much much deeper than that and so the thing is in this intimate conversation or communication um there's total vulnerability okay so you're making yourself vulnerable uh the some of the things that you're talking about yourself uh your you know uh, vulnerable means you're exposing yourself right exposing your strengths exposing your weaknesses and and it's in a in a in a environment of trust right uh it, it's in a place of trust it's in a place of um, commitment so it's a safe environment where you're being uh, intimate in your conversation right in your communication so uh, so we, the thing is it is in a covenant relationship that this kind of communication takes place so the danger is that if this communication takes place in outside multiple settings you know uh, then there's a there's a problem you know you're emotionally connected to someone because this kind of conversation does that and uh, if it's not your spouse then there's there'll be a problem because it's the way you know god designed um 
the covenant relations to be that it it needs to be you know this kind of communication needs to be in that setting only where there's relationship where there's trust where there's commitment and it's in a covenant kind of a setting so it's very intimate therefore uh, we need to be careful right uh, with whom are we having this kind of a vulnerable intimate conversation right? communication right okay so um so the thing is this that uh, our communication level um, uh, needs to grow okay our, uh, our communication needs to change you know if it's only casual or if it's only professional exchange of ideas there's a lot of talk you know there's a lot of time spent you're talking about the weather you're talking about the pol you're talking about politics you're talking about uh, traffic you're talking about you know, what happened at work you're talking about all that um you know that's great so there's, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of movement there's a lot of momentum but really the communication doesn't go deeper than that the deeper the communication the deeper the relationship because communication actually does that to the relationship okay so um sort of for healthy meaningful communication you know it requires time okay so let's look at that it requires time it look at it requires trans trust and uh, transparency so the three t's if you want to call it that of meaningful communication so time okay so time is a uh, investment of it time when we say time it's not just you know time spent it could be you know we can spend about maybe you know six hours seven hours continuously and not really have meaningful communication so we're saying you know this investment of time meaning intentionally um having this kind of intimate uh, communication um and investing our time in it okay so what happens is that uh, you know this kind of communication happens you know like uh, maybe uh, early days of marriage and, and all that but if we are not intentional about it it can just fall by the wayside meaning you know you become so engrossed in the routines of life in the busyness of life in you know in getting things done and uh, in the complexities of life right uh, maybe you know when children come along then parenting and absolutely you feel like hey there's no time you know just um, getting uh, looking after the children and getting them ready for school you know everything priority everything changes right so the th thing is to intentionally invest time uh, in order to have communication in order to have deep communication okay uh, like even today we were just talking about it hey when when should we sit down and talk about things like normally it's it's over a cup of coffee in the morning um but then sometimes that also becomes a rush. Um, and today I, I was just gently preparing and having my coffee. So it's not really, you know, so, so we're saying, hey, we need to, you know, we need to sit down and uh, have a proper this thing. So, so we haven't decided yet when. But uh, so the thing is that to know the importance of it and intentionally set up time for it. Okay. So, um, so it needs to be at a time when both our energy levels are. You know at an optimum level in the sense the other person if the other person says oh yo, i'm tired please leave me i just don't want to talk about anything now and i don't want to talk about those you know those complex things those issues i just I just want to relax okay so we need to work out a time you know, because some people are morning people you know five o'clock in the morning they are just buzzing they're just thriving and five o'clock in the morning is like middle of the night for some other others you know they they just not so you need to find out you need to figure out okay with with your spouse okay what is the um, and what is the time so for for us uh, for some of us who are not you not know, yet married you know for the things to keep in mind okay that communication needs to be intentional it needs to be an investment and it needs to be at a time when you know when the person uh, the person is also you know energetic you know um, and uh, they are able to engage in conversation okay right so then um we take care uh, okay uh, let me just change the slide okay um okay we'll come to that a little later okay yeah so um so when it comes to uh, time again you know um 
it requires time we can't rush it okay so when we say meaningful communication um it requires time we need to invest we need to be intentional about it we need to do it at a time when when we are you know when the other person is also able to also um you know um, energy levels are high so okay um, so we understand that uh, also plan for extended times uh, maybe like a vacation uh, you know it need, needn't be anything fancy but really um, where you can spend time to do this right so keep that in mind okay so the second one is trust okay so trust is something that is earned trust is something that is given you know trust is required for good communication why do we say that right because if a person does not trust the other person and uh, that really quickly very quickly shuts down the communication right? if i'm not able to trust you how can i be vulnerable and open and talk about my you know dreams aspirations because if i don't trust you then like if you if you're going to make fun of me like if you're going to you know going to just totally shut me down if you're going to make fun of me in front of others about this you know what hey, you know what my wife said this the other day and you're you know in the gathering with friends and uh, so that very quickly destroys the trust and because trust is destroyed uh, that shuts down the relate the communication also so the, so what happens is that your spouse the spouse you know your, the wife feels that okay i it's not like I, I i majorly distrust the husband but i can't trust him with these deep things right i can't trust him with these things that i fear or these things i care about because if he's going to make a joke about it in in public then uh, you know i'd rather not do that so um, you know he just keeps it locked in within okay right so uh, when we say uh, how do we develop trust when our actions and we say we will do something and then we do it meaning our actions uh, back up the words that we speak right when we say when we promise something we keep it right when we say okay i will not let this out i'll be you know this is confidential i will keep it confidential and you keep it then uh, the, it builds trust i mean simple things like you know okay i'll i'll meet you here at this time you do that do that it builds trust you know i will i will get this done or if you're for some reason unable to you communicate that at, as well saying you know this is what happened but i will do it right um so but when we don't back up our words with actions um, then uh, over a period of time it erodes trust okay so it uh, chips away at trust and breaks down trust um, and it's very very difficult to win back trust right? it it is possible to build trust again but it's a long process okay as it is trust trust takes time but if there is a you know if, if there is a breakdown of trust then to rebuild the trust um, takes extra effort extra grace and uh, extra time right be aware of that so it's good to you know keep that trust or protect that trust in marriage okay so, uh, so yeah so these are some things that we uh, understand about trust third thing is transparency you know, transparency again takes time transparency is um, you know making ourselves vulnerable uh, you know one person uh, defined it that way like uh, you know transparency and intimacy like into me you see you know so it's, like, it's like being transparent being open so that the other person is able to look in and uh, see you for who you really are so which means you're sharing your innermost thoughts uh, your dreams you're not holding back so being transparent right so um this also takes time right so um uh, it also means that you're doing the other things right uh what are those other things renewing your mind being led by the spirit you know embracing your identity embracing what christ did for us on the cross so especially when it comes to identity if we are 
you know strong in it then it enables us to be a lot more transparent you know because they're you you're getting rid of your insecurities you're getting rid of your fears um you're getting rid of your you know your need for approval and acceptance uh, because you are already accepted you're already uh, uh, loved by god unconditionally so you know all that uh, really helps you to uh, to be you know uh, to be transparent right okay um let's uh, you know, if you're following in your notes maybe you can look at um, there is this check okay uh, the way things are right now okay it's a, it's a reflection of uh, uh, an estimate of transparency level so you can just go through that uh, and it's uh, it's really be an eye opener right okay and the best thing is to have your spouse do that and rate it uh, it will be an eye opener for you as well okay okay All right okay we'll stop here take a break and uh, and come back okay thank you <laughs>